aided by Gorn, the rebels infiltrate the garrison by posing as an escort squad for Commandant J. Hold Behaz, Gorn's superior. They take Behaz's family as hostage and force him to give them access to the payroll vault. While loading the credits onto the, a freighter, they are discovered by Imperial forces. Tamarin and Gorn are killed in the ensuing firefight. Sinta is unable to make it onto the ship, so only Cassian, Skeen, Vel, and Nemec escape from Aldani. During takeoff, Nemec is crushed by an unsecured load of credits and suffers a severe injury. They land on the planet Fresno to treat Nemec's injuries. With Vel occupied looking after Nemec, Skeen proposes to Cassian that they flee and split the payroll between the two. Enraged and fearing for his life, Cassian kills Skeen. He tells Vel about what happened and informs her of his plans to take the amount he was promised as payment and leave. Vel gives Cassian's Nemec, Nemec's uh, manifesto in accordance with Nemec's dying wishes. Back on Coruscant, the ISB agents are gathered to formulate reprisals to the heist while Luthen hears news of the theft and quietly celebrates. That is the synopsis of episode 6 of the first season of Andor entitled The Eye. And of course the eye refers to that once in a generation, once in a blue moon, once in a while or wherever comes every other century, whatever you want to say, that, that whole light show whatever the, the thing in the air right you had these um, what do you call these pilgrims talking Aldani looking up in the sky and it's like a distraction while they try to pull off this heist this episode really was a very very tension filled episode you really really felt for all of the guys and gals doing this really really worried about whether or not they're going to pull it off in the end they did but there was a lot of uh consequences to their actions a lot of things happened losing some on the way even when they were uh you know escaped and they're on their way with uh that payroll, right? That um, credit, all those credits. They lose. But beforehand, of course, he lost uh, Gorn and uh, Gorn and Tamarin. And then Sinta's unable to. You know, she's in the the Imperial uniform and everything, and I wonder what's going to happen to her. But she wasn't able to get on the uh, ship. And only uh, Cassian and Vel, Skeen, and Nemec were there. But Nemec gets crushed, you know, by those unsecured credits. And they go to a doctor who has four hands. And even with them four hands, he wasn't able to, to save him. Skeen, who should be called Scheme... It's funny because he said 80 million credits, right? And I'm like, the worth of it. I'm going, and then we could split it, you know, 40 million a piece. And I go, wait a minute. I think he meant, another, I think he got the math wrong. And then I thought to myself, oh, he's, he's, he's trying to uh, be like, hey, between us two, you and me, Cassian, we're going to split the money both ways, 40 million each. Cassian's only interested in his share, what he was promised. And he kills Skeen. I'm like, whoa, shit. You know? They lost Tamron, they lost Dorn, Nemec, and then Skeen. No, no, Lord knows what's going to happen to Sinta. And now Bell and Cassian are the only ones that escape. How's. What's. Sinta going to do? Is she going to be in uniform and, and try to get out of there? Try to skedaddle out of there? I mean, I'm going to see the next episode in episode 7 and see what happens to her. 
kind of kind of worried, but at the same time, that's that's the risk these guys took. These guys and gals took. I mean, this up, like I said, this episode really was a, an amazing episode. It was directed by Suzanne White. She did a very good job. Probably the best episode, and it's the halfway point. You know, we got twelve episodes, and I can't wait. I love the uh, the end when uh, Luthen hears this and he's just giggling like a little like a schoolgirl, <laughs> you know, knowing that they uh, got away with the theft. Unfortunately, you know they lost those who they lost along the way, but I'm telling you, man, it's like it's really really just amazing how the way they just captured the feel of like how it was back like during the you know no a new hope you know it totally goes in line with that that time this is five years before uh rogue one and it's just like unlike some you know the uh the the sequel trilogy even like the the one before uh you know the the, the prequel trilogy of star wars it looked too advanced it looked too uh, you know, the, the lightsaber duels and all that were too just well fast and like that. And it looked good, you know what I mean? It's like that. I mean, I understand that back then everything was tip top and everything was, you know, not like how it was later on because that's when everything was kind of like the rebuilding and everything like that. And you had the Death Star being built and small pockets of uh rebel alliances and then you know trying to make their uh their way to try to end the uh, empire Darth Vader and uh Palpatine and da -da, but but I just liked it I liked the familiarity of the TIE fighters the, the pilots you know that very very uh familiar helmet that they wear and I was seeing the TIE Fighters and I'm just like, whoa, man, it's so cool to see the, the TIE Fighters and how they got deployed. And when these guys were escaping, the TIE Fighters were right after them. And even Nemec, as he was in pain, obviously dying, he's telling Andor what to do. Andor needs coordinates, but he's like, go up, just, just, you know, go up. Uh, 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 just, what was it? What was this? That climb? There you go. Climb, you know, climb. He's all like, "Are you sure? I don't have it. this climb." You know, he's just telling them, "Just do it, please." You know, and he listens to him. He goes up, and then when the Tie Fighters are following him, he goes dive. He dives, and I, I believe that one of the Tie Fighters hit the other guy, hit his fellow uh, Tie Fighter pilot, and you know, he went down. They were able to shake him off. And they were able to go to the doctor. They said that was going to, I mean, Belle didn't want to do it because she didn't think that that was necessary because it was going to jeopardize the mission. She even gave uh, Nemec a shot. And I believe that was something to kind of maybe ease his pain and he was just going to die. I don't know what it was. I don't think it was an adrenaline shot of anything to try to keep him awake. She didn't want to go to the doctor, so was that what it was? Just to kind of ease his pain and help him to cross over, if you will? Don't know, you know? And it's kind of funny, because remember it was it was uh, mentioned um, when Cassian was first there, you know, when he first went to the encampment and met these guys, and then he was looking at Cynthia, and then Skeen goes, well, you know, there's someone else's bed that she shares, or something like that. And then you kind of see Vel and her kind of look at each other, you know, kind of lovingly and longingly and all that stuff. I'm thinking, okay, that's the one that she is. I'm like, okay, all right, you know. You kind of wondering who, and it's like it's Vel. I mean, that's what I got from the scene, but you know, I guess so. But like I said, Santa is going to be uh, probably in trouble. I don't know how she's going to get out of there. She might. Who knows? All the commotion and everything like that. But who knows? They probably locked everything down. To make sure that nobody escapes and they're gonna maybe they're gonna try to see if they can find whomever was connected to this they're gonna probably think figure out especially the fact that the isb agents with that commander of theirs and he's 
pretty much telling them what they're gonna what they need to do and they're gonna formulate a plan or a reprisal to the heist that just took place so that's that so uh, you know I mean these guys are gonna have to find themselves a, like a hole in the wall or a hole in the planet or a hole in the galaxy to kind of hide out and let the, everything kind of die down and then you know I mean 80 million credits right and I'm thinking how many people are, you know, like he wants his share. Bell's gonna have, what? How much? How many more millions, right? And then Cinta, if she if she's able to get back to him, you know, she's gonna give it some to her. And then, whom else? Uh, Luthen. Mon Mothma. I don't know. If she's involved in that. She was given a some sort of a legislation thing. She was trying to pass something, and then you see all these people just getting up and leaving. And then she looks on that whatever uh, their generation of an uh, iPod, I'm an iPad or something, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's looking at it and apparently, she, I'm sure she saw the news of what happened there in uh, Aldani. But like I said, this was a great episode, man. I can't say anything more to make it, you know, to give my uh, opinion about it. I, I, I mean, I, I, what, can, what else can I say? It was just... Really, really well written, well paced. I liked the uh, the way that they just built the tension. I mean, it makes you go, are these guys going to be able to get out of there? I mean, they pulled it off, like I said earlier, but you were like thinking, are these guys going to get away with it? If you see some of them die along the way, Cassian is able to get out of there, but then at like, the same time, I said, like, I like what I one time when they're having that firefight. And Cassian's like, cover me, cover me, you know, and then like, you see him going, I'm going, no, you should just run. Because you survived till, um, till, um, you know, till, uh, what do you call Rogue One? I mean, that's the reason why he survived the Rogue One, because you got some great guys like Nemec, and Nemec's a great shot. When that one guy, one of the Imperial, uh, I don't know, Imperial soldiers, Imperial guards, whatever you want to call them, had him in the chokehold, and then he got shot. And then it's like this, and he was just, uh, he was like, uh, Nemec was like leaning on his side or something to hit him. And I'm going, what a good shot, man. The guy was, you know, too bad, you know, the kid uh, didn't make it. But he was really, really good. And it's funny because I don't, I don't remember seeing uh, Gorn get shot. I saw somebody get shot, look like him, and I go, is that him or is that just one of the guys? But I'm thinking, yeah, but it must have been just quick. I may have looked away really quick and didn't see it. You know, I mean, I saw, of course, um, we call it a Terramin get shot. I thought he well, probably was wounded or something, but they were, weren't gonna, you know, they weren't gonna hang around and see whether or not he was okay or even try to pick him up and drag him onto the thing, onto that uh, freighter or whatever. The one thing that they were, uh, they, they, that they escaped in. Because they were getting, they were like being very, they were, they were like cornered. I mean, they were getting shot at and there was no way for them to breathe. They couldn't breathe. I mean, they couldn't like, take a breath I mean they had to keep moving they had to keep shooting back and stuff so yeah that's that so he's you know he's there and you know, Gorn is you know he's, he's dead too and like that so episode 7 we'll see uh, what happens to the um, to Cinta and then um, I don't know who else they, they pretty much got away except for her so to see what the verdict is on her or what's gonna happen to her if she got out of there hopefully she did but you never know. I'm sure Bell's going to be worried thinking about her, but that's the risk these guys, you know, were willing to take, you know, for all that, all that, uh, coin, if you will, all that. When they opened it up and they got that one guy, um, J-Hole has what a name. I like that. It's a very unique name, but not as annoying as Jar Jar Binks. And nothing's going to be annoying about that. <laughs> nothing's going to be more annoying than that. And he's in there and he's insisting that he don't have the coordinates and all that stuff, whatever, not coordinates, but the the thing to open it up and stuff, you have to get it from, you know, the headquarters or whatever, something like that. And she didn't take it. She didn't believe him. Bell goes, you keep on lying. Keep lying. And it's going to be your fi family's ass. It's going to be all those people that I'm going to, you know, kill them all. Something like that. He died or he collapsed or something. I don't know. I don't. I didn't see him get hit. I don't know. Maybe in the, in the suing firefight, he maybe he got hit. I don't know. But then again, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, he collapsed or that right before. Even Gorn was saying, "Tell him, tell me." Gorn, he already knew that Gorn had 
was like the wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing where he's just like he knew he was the traitor he said man you're gonna hang for this and then Gorn goes you know I've been working for you for seven years I think I deserve uh better than that <laughs> something like that and I'm like yeah the guy looks like a he looks like a total tyrant he looked like a guy who probably everybody hated we all have that supervisor we all have that guy who we all hate right the guy thinks he knows everything he thinks he, what he tells you is uh the, you know the gospel you have to listen to him even though he's telling you things like you know it's making it your life a living hell at work but uh anyway uh like i said this video is i mean this video <laughs> this uh episode called the eye uh, episode six of uh the first episode season of uh, andor was really good i enjoyed it like i said everything about it it was to me the best episode of uh, this season and who knows seven might be better than six but so far it's season six i mean episode six is the best uh episode according to me right now and um got 12 episodes we got six more now halfway there and i really like i said i enjoyed it very very good episode there's nothing more i can say so uh, for those of you who uh, stopped by and uh, checked out this video, I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. And in closing, as always, take care.